All right, folks. So we are here to listen to the self-determined chef. My name is Mr. Ryan. I'm a relatively new person with dimensions. I used to be an ASO and then I left for a while and now I'm back. After August, I'll be an EF. So I'm very excited to be working with dimensions in Mission Valley. So that's me, that's where I'm going. Very excited to be here and let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Healthy eating and cooking habits with Mr. Ryan. Now, I want to start this off by saying that I am not the healthiest eater and I don't have the, the most pristine of cooking habits or the most successful of cooking habits, but what I do kind of works for me and you don't necessarily have to copy exactly what I have in these slides, but maybe it'll give you some ideas to help you and and your family in the future. So why are we listening to this presentation? This presentation is going to be all about healthy eating and cooking habits, which can benefit our families now, as well as ourselves individually in the future as we transition from middle school, high school, depending on where you are, to college and beyond. Because yeah, life continues after college. It doesn't just stop. So we're going to try and avoid what Patrick's doing. We need a nice breakfast, but we're not going to dump everything from the table into our giant mouths. All right, so why should we have a healthy diet? Why should we eat in a healthy way? Well, these are some of the very few benefits of healthy eating or one of the many uh, benefits of healthy eating. These are just a few of them. It's going to help us live longer. It's going to help, help keep our skin, eyes and teeth healthy. It's going to support our muscles. It's going to boost our immunity. It's going to strengthen our bones. It's going to lower the risk of all kinds of diseases like heart disease and maybe even some kinds of cancer. It's going to support pregnancy and breastfeeding. I'm really worried about supporting that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's going to help our digestive systems, and it's also going to help us achieve and maintain a healthy weight. This is important for us now as well as into the future. The healthier we are now, in theory, the healthier we'll be uh, down the road. So what does healthy eating look like? I took this from Harvard. I tried to find one from the CDC, but they all were a little too cartoony. So I took this one from Harvard, and it's got that traditional plate that we all have seen. Usually uh, you might see a triangle as well, but I chose the one for a plate and it looks like at least half of our meal is fruits and vegetables. They say a little bit more than half vegetables, maybe a quarter fruits, but at least half of our meal should be fruits and vegetables. Included in those are healthy oils uh, like olive oil, or I guess it says canola oil here. And lots of veggies, any kind of veggies, but you know, potatoes and french fries don't count, even if they're cooked in a healthy oil. And then plenty of fruits of all colors. Doesn't necessarily need to be uh, red fruits or purple fruits, all colors. And then whole grains, whole grains, some examples of whole grains would be like uh, farro, wheat, uh, spelt, all kinds of good stuff like that. And then we're gonna eat a variety of those with lots and lots of water brown rice, all that good stuff. And then protein. This is something that I have to work on, especially with my red meat intake. I do love a good steak now and then, but a healthy protein is really important. Something like fish, poultry or beans, uh, nuts, and you know it says limit red meats and cheeses. Definitely something that I need to work on. All right. So how do you eat in a healthy way? How, how is this accomplished? Well, it starts with you going grocery shopping and it starts with you having a plan, in my opinion. It starts with you having a plan. So it's really bad idea to go grocery shopping hungry. So definitely after you've had some food, sit down and think about what you wanna eat the next day and the next day and the next day, plan a week out and see how that goes for you. Maybe you'll get to two weeks like this plan here, or maybe you'll even start uh, doing a monthly plan where you plan almost all of your meals out a month in advance. So have a good plan ready. Have a list of things that you really enjoy eating and try to create some recipes and dishes around the ingredients that you enjoy. You're gonna want something for every day of the week, at least two to three meals a day, 
Um, nowadays, they're saying to eat smaller meals more frequently throughout the day. So if there's a way for you to budget for that, absolutely. But you know, generally a good meal a day uh, should be uh, in your in your plans. So what does this do? So it allows you to go to the grocery store and shop for things with a plan. Instead of going and just picking all the things that look good in the moment, you've got a list of things that you need, a list of things to help you create all the meals that you'll be enjoying throughout the week. And it doesn't have to be 100% written in stone. You could leave places in for leftovers or take out even. You, there's no reason to deprive yourself if you really want, uh, gosh, I don't know, what's a guilty pleasure? If you really want that milkshake from In-N-Out or that double-double from In-N-Out, you can tell where my head's at. Uh, you don't have to deprive yourself, but you shouldn't be eating that stuff every single day. So maybe on Monday you'll do something like Instapot bar beef barbacoa. Oh my gosh, all of these sound so good. Uh, something like a Greek chicken kebabs. And, oh, Mr. Ryan, I don't enjoy chicken. I'm a vegetarian. We'll just substitute any of these for whichever ingredients you enjoy more. So to have a plan every day of the week is a great idea to keep yourself on track, to keep yourself from eating the things that you shouldn't necessarily eat, and to help support you to eat the things that you probably should start eating. Who can eat healthily? Who can cook? Well, one of my favorite movies is Ratatouille, and as you've probably been watching this whole time, I have a couple gifts. Uh, one is Remy watching um, the great Gusto on TV, and he's saying, wow, it's true, anyone can cook. So I really do believe that anyone can cook. For me, I started cooking with my grandma when I was really, really young. Uh, for you, you might be cooking from watching YouTube videos, or maybe you live with your parents or grandparents and you're learning from them. Maybe you went on a trip somewhere and you had something amazing and you went home and you looked up how to make that, and that's how you got into cooking. All it takes is for you to get into it. And once you get into it, once you learn some basics, anyone can cook. More time we'd go into some cooking basics. <laughs> All right. So some healthy cooking habits. How is this going to work? Well, it's only going to work if you find recipes that you enjoy. We're not cooking for other people. Or it's not a restaurant. We're not making food that others will enjoy. We want to make food that you enjoy. How do you know what you enjoy? Well, you could ask your family, your friends, or your classmates for some ideas. You can search the internet for some recipes. You could read some blogs about people who go traveling around the world and try all kinds of different foods and write down the recipes that they find. You can check out videos, magazines, or cookbooks. One of my favorite things to do is going out to eat and then trying to recreate that thing that I had out to eat at home. It doesn't always work up or work work out the way that you want it to, but you try some new things in the process. You try some new combinations, maybe. Maybe you go to sleep that night after having some food and you dream up some new ingredients or a new way to cook that something something. And maybe it's a combination of both. The point is, that if you don't find something that you like immediately, keep trying. It's not the end of the world. Substitute different ingredients. Ultimately, the goal is to find or create recipes that you enjoy and that taste good to you. Some recipes will be easy, some will be hard, just like life. Some things are easy, some things are hard. You will like some and probably won't like others. But the point is, is to use healthy ingredients and make meals that, once again, you enjoy. These are some of the meals that I enjoy. Once in a while, my wife and I will make a big batch of red pozole. It'll sit in the fridge and it'll just get better and better and better. We'll also make some masoor dal. Dal is a, a, a Hindi word for lentil, so it's a lentil curry. Really good for those vegetarians out there. This is the opposite of something that's good for vegetarians. This is a medianoche Cuban pork sandwich. Lots of pickles and ham, cheese, ooey gooey and then lettuce wraps. This happens to be the copycat recipe from P.F. Chang's. Very good. <laughs> so 
So like I said, a meal prep is a great idea to start. Maybe you can do a daily meal prep where you wake up and you prep out all the different things you want to eat that day. Maybe you take a day of the week and you prep all the things that you want to eat that week. Maybe you go so far as to do that three more times and do some monthly meal planning. Three small meals, a couple snacks a day is usually what people eat. A variety of ingredients and recipes are really great so that you can alternate between meals and snacks. That way you don't get bored. And then a monthly meal plan is excellent. It'll help you to create shopping lists of ingredients that you need to create a variety of meals and snacks that are within your schedule. And most importantly, especially as you get older and start making your own money, good for your budget. <laughs> So creating a meal prep plan will not only help you stock and shop wisely, but it will ultimately save you time and money in the long run. For example, the average price per serving of home cooked meals is like $4.30 thereabouts, while the average cost of going out to eat is about $20.37 per person. So once again, creating a meal prep plan can help you to not only plan what and when you are going to eat to maintain your physical, but as well as your financial health. But it'll prepare you for being for being healthy as you become more and more independent. That's what we're all about. This is an important skill to practice and perfect now before you work any harder or become any busier than you already are. I know it seems impossible but life is gonna get moving faster and faster and faster, and you're gonna find yourself trying to keep up with that fast pace. Now you could either turn to fast food. Ooh, yeah, it's fast, it's easy, it's convenient, but it's expensive, and it's not very good for you in the long run. Or you can develop this, this important skill to practice now. Uh, that way you can eat healthy and be healthy while you study and work hard toward pursuing your passions. So I've got a little video for you here. I don't know if, how we're doing on time. Ms. Tanya, how are we doing? You're OK, Ryan. You had um, until 2.30, so five more minutes, and we started a couple minutes late, so you're good. OK, perfect. All right, so this video, I think it's like a minute and a half, and it's got everything spelled out for you here just in case you're not so um, inclined to listen to the video. Oops, there we go. So to cook and prepare your own meals as often as you can, plan healthy meals and make a healthy shopping list. Read nutritional labels. What do you need to pay attention to? Essentially saturated fat, sodium, and sugar. The higher the number, the more unhealthy the food item is. Eat breakfast every day to jumpstart your metabolism. I skip breakfast a lot. That's something that I have to work on. Eat smaller meals more frequently. Drink lots of water every day. Coffee does not count. Tea does not count. Actual water. <laughs> and if you feel a difference in your body for the worse, make changes so that you feel a difference in your body for the better. We need to make choices that help our bodies feel good. So let's watch this video really quick. Ryan, if there's sound, we don't seem to have it. Oh. OK. Stop sharing. Share. Background sound window. How about. Now. Facilities. How about now? A shopping list. You're good. Healthy foods. Right. Breakfast, healthy snacks and water. Optional books and internet access step one cook and prepare your own meals as often as you can this will help you avoid eating processed and fast foods which are higher in sodium and fat healthy low-fat recipes and guidance are available in bookstores and on the internet step two plan healthy meals and make a shopping list fill your cart with lots of fresh fruits and vegetables whole grain foods and lean meats Step three, read nutrition labels. Pay attention to saturated fat, sodium, and sugar. The higher the numbers, the unhealthier they are. Step four, eat breakfast every day. Breakfast helps to rev up your metabolism. Make it a habit to eat something within the first hour after you wake up. Step five, try to eat small meals every three to four hours. Aim for three small balanced meals and two snacks. Step six, 
drink plenty of water every day. Water hydrates the body and aids the digestive system. And it's calorie free. Step 7. Feel the difference in your body. More energy and stamina, as well as sharper thinking as you feed your body healthy foods. Did you know, a study found that more than 16% of U.S. children and teens are obese. Fortunately, since that film was made, I think it's a little bit higher. But that's a great way to start to help fight obesity, especially in childhood. So here are some healthy eating and cooking habits uh, resources that I have for you. These are some different places to find recipes, like this first one is healthy recipes that are super duper easy that anyone can make themselves pretty much. These are healthy cultural recipes. Let's say you're craving, I don't know, Japanese food or Chinese food or Indian food um, or Middle Eastern food. You can go to one of these, these websites and you can check it out. Uh, these are how to read nutritional value labels, very important skill, so that when you're out buying your groceries, you know what's good and what's not good. A nutritional value calculator, let's say you wanted to find out how many calories are in a handful of nuts, you could type in your amounts and it'll show you how much nutritional value that quantity of food has or doesn't have. There's meal plan templates for day, week, and month. There's meal plan budget templates for day, week, and month. And there's also a calculator which helps us calculate the cost of eating out versus cooking at home. I thought that was a really cool one too. So this brings us to the very end of my presentation and I'm gonna leave us with this reminder to eat healthily and to cook healthily at home as much as humanly possible. The point is of course, to make things that we all enjoy. It's no fun if we don't enjoy it. So make sure you're having fun and make sure you're enjoying it. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to invite all of you to ask a couple questions. And while you're asking questions, if those people don't have questions, um, you can go.